Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. It's time to get a gun. That's what I've been thinking. Well, I could afford one. And if I did just a little less drinking, time to put something between me and the sun. Welcome to Slime Fire Radio. Fo- Fuck. <laughs> We're live. No swearing. Okay. Sorry. Bad Kelly. Yeah. Potty mouth. I know. Eh? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Slime Fire Radio, episode 325 for October 10th, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Kelly. Is that me? Yeah, that's you. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm another host, Adriel. And I'm Trevor. I know how to use show notes. That's why I answer promptly. Trying to get the show back up and running. Yeah, manage all really the screens. Well, if you're not ready, then say so. Otherwise, you get caught looking with your pants down. I'm not, dumb. I'm not. It's not that I'm not ready. I'm Adriel. It's not. I'm, oh, I'm not, I'm not it's ready. not. I'm delayed. Adriel's always ready. The delay is natural. Yeah. Sorry. I forgot yeah. about the touch of the tiz with this one. Developmentally delayed. Developmentally re- yeah. De- yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. The correct term for that is retarded. <laughs> I believe that's the old timey term for it. No, it is still the correct term. It has nothing to do with Down syndrome. If you're delayed, you have a retardation of the mental process. Oh it's my god! Technically correct for me to call you retarded, and political correctness has nothing to do with it. Really? Just slow. Just a little bit slow. <laughs> retarded. That's what slow means. How many? You can send your complaints to slimefireradio at gmail dot com. You can to Trevor, please. You can send them to my psychology degree and the professors who taught me the correct use of the term. What do you want from me? You went to Stu. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah. It's a, you know, it was it's liberal so arts. Did I. It was liberal arts then, Kelly. Well, it's a liberal arts liberal. cesspool now. Like, it's just no. it's lost. Okay. Uh, why don't we talk about what we did in guns this week? So, what we did in guns this week is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center. It's Canada's fire, premier firearms uh, retailer. They have the ADM red dots, and they're on their way. So who put this like diatribe in here? Um, updating the Calgary Shooting Center, according to the show notes, is my responsibility, <laughs> Kelly. Oh, yeah. We so I guess that would be me. Yes. Guess what? Then you get to read it. because Perfect. I'd love to. Pages long. It's not. It's four lines. Anyway, this is a really cool um, red dot there. Um, they operate off of a AAA lithium battery. Now, what's cool about this is even though it's a AAA battery, they still have a ridiculous five-year-long battery life on level five if kept at room temperature. So a lot of guys look for the CR123 battery red dots because those last a long time, like the aim points. But this mm-hmm. is a red dot that will stay on for five years with a AAA lithium alkaline battery. So, you know what uh, I say? What? Challenge accepted. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. It's got um, 10 daytime brightness settings, uh, two night vision settings. Um, if so basically, it's going to work in any kind of light condition. Magnification is one time. So you got basically, you know, yeah. So um, you can also, they also make a magnifier. So you can mm-hmm. use the two together as a unit. Um, super light. It's only 3.9 ounces. Uh, and I like this auto shut off for 16 hours. So if you do forget it on, and it doesn't move oh, for six. It lasts for five years. Yeah, auto yeah. Auto off. Auto off after sixteen hours. So yeah, but still, that's good. pretty cool. Yep, and yep. uh, four hundred and fifty bucks. So they're uh, they're a high end piece of kit. ADM red dots. That I think they're actually in stock now at the Calgary Shooting Center. So if you're yep. looking for a red dot, you oh. don't want the EOTech blinky blinky or the expensive aim point. Check them out. Mm-hmm. I put okay. it up. I put it up on the screen for people to see. Giddy up. Mm-hmm. All right, Trevor, why don't you talk about what you did in guns last week? All right, so um, last Friday, left straight from work to go to Fredericton, where I met Filthy at his office and was um, 
mentoring, supervising, whatever my role as training coordinator um, with a an up and coming black badge instructor, Justin Brown was completing his fifth and final uh, course. So in New Brunswick to become a black badge instructor, you have to assist with four courses and be the lead instructor on course number five. So he took uh, almost all of the classroom. I barely interjected. I know that's hard to believe, but it's oh true. Oh my God. I know. Like, did you have to sit on your hands and like put a gag in your mouth? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, Gallon was in town. So getting on my hands on a oh, gag was ball was easy. pretty yeah, easy. Was, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> tied up from the day before. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And then, so uh, we did the classroom part Friday night. Saturday, we had three students come out to Filthy's Range and did the qualification drills. How'd and that go? Oh, went well for almost everyone. Um, someone else will be trying again later on. Okay. Uh, good shooter. Just uh, ran in some accuracy issues and decided to uh, step down and try again later. And uh, there's there's no doubt in my mind that she'll be uh, successful and will contribute to the sport in a very positive way. So looking forward to getting her back. Um, the other two, my godson's uh, girlfriend, she was in the course and cool. God bless, yeah, God bless her. She, um, the night before the course, she didn't know what she would be shooting. Oh yeah. what? Yeah. Very not ideal. Um, she was supposed to shoot one gun and then they, you know, they didn't have a left-handed holster. Typically she always shoots left-handed. Um, but Marcel only had a right-handed holster. So she, we're gonna try. So she was borrowing her Marcel's uh, gun. Well, it would, she was supposed to, and then anyway, we spent a bunch of time getting the mag pouches all reversed to left hand, put yeah. the holster on the gun, on the belt after doing all that, only to find out that the holster belt gun combo wasn't going to work. Mm. So, yeah. Anyway, Fred LaPierre, um, filthy squire to the rescue. One one text message said, you need the gun. It'll be on the range tomorrow morning. I'll see you in the morning. He brought out his gun, his holster, and his mags, and... um we put them on an Ipsic belt and she had never touched an FN FNS before, but it doesn't matter. Okay. She's yeah. just it's, it's an FNS. Point and click yeah. goes bang every time, you know, yep. she, she owns a Walther PPQ match. Like she's nice. got a nice gun. Oh yeah. She's first gun. She picked up that she felt like really fit her hand. Well, so she bought that from DC armory actually. Um, but didn't get around to getting a belt and holster set up in time. She's got all winter to do that. So okay. anyway, um, we, uh, we allowed for the times on the time drills a little bit because the holster was, um, a carry holster with a lot of retention. So it was like really a lot of work to get the gun out of it. So it was cutting, really messing up her times, but, um, yeah, anyway, she did great. The other guy, Mark did great. And, um, uh, the, Justin did a great job as an instructor. And then the losers club came out and helped us build all the stages for the next day. They were actually working on one bay while we were um, doing the class in the other bay. And then we finished up that bay. Okay, so can you stop for just a second for those that, that haven't listened last week or the week before what's the losers club. Oh, okay. So the losers club is a Facebook conversation going between myself, my squire, um, filthy, my godson, um, Pospy, who else? Justin Brown is in there. So anyway, um, you know, you can, in a Facebook conversation, you can give each other nicknames and then you can actually name the conversation. So, mm -hmm. um, I was supposed to go see it that night. So I was watching it one and, um, you know, the group of kids in the movie, it, they refer to themselves as the losers club. They're like this tight core group of friends so anyway i take the conversation in the losers club and then it kind of stuck when we were going to marcel's for a barbecue and he said trust me you will not be able to miss my place and out at the end of the driveway is a piece of corrugated plastic with camo duct tape the word meeting of the losers club <laughs> right out on the street <laughs> so so it's kind of stuck since then and uh they started to use it as well so i think it's going to be a thing so I think so, too. Yeah. So they were building the bay beside you guys while you were doing the uh, qualification. Finishing the course, yeah. Yeah, And then, yeah, we got together and built the rest of the stages. And Justin did a fantastic job using the limited space that Sunbury has to the best of his abilities. We pulled off nine stages Wow! in, in two bays and were done by 2 p.m. in the afternoon. How and, many people were shooting? Well, Two bays, two squads. And that's the key, right? A lot of times clubs allow more shooters in than they can really accommodate with the amount of stages, the amount of bays. You get bottlenecks and you wait and you wait and you wait. Mm -hmm. We were timed perfectly. 
when bay one was done, we basically passed bay two. You know, we were just walking into bay two oh, love it as they were, yeah, man, they were getting ready to walk out. So, um, yeah, nine stages. Like it was more like, so like basically, okay. Like you, you shoot this side and then you shoot that side and then you shoot the middle where well, you just saw three stages. Now we're going to put it all together and shoot, um, one long course fire. Right. How'd you do? You got, uh, oh, it was, a, it was a slaughter. <laughs> this was like, this had a bunch of. <laughs> Fresh black bags. Yeah, and they were brand though, new. Right? Uh, no, it had two. Okay. okay. Remember, remember, there was only how three big, in the class. But remember, how so many there was, shooters? Okay, there's yeah. twenty. Twenty shooters. All right. Um, but somebody did make an observation, Adriel, mm-hmm. and uh, that almost everyone at the match was a black badge student from uh, the spring or from 2018. Wow. So yeah, there was. It's not. Yeah. I, I was not up against Eric Rafael. This is true. But I did beat a guy who'd been around a long time, one of our top production shooters. So fantastic that uh, you guys are putting on matches that some of the new guys are are getting into, right? Because sometimes it's hard for them to, especially in in areas where it's oversubscribed and you just have too many shooters and not enough matches. It's it's kind of tough for for new guys to even get into the matches because they don't know, set an alarm when the thing goes up for registration you got to be like on that otherwise that's right get a spot yep. right that's, that's what's right. going to happen for summer slime i'm going to sit there midnight on january and just watch it explode um so on that adriel it's interesting but the last couple of years i'm noticing that our matches are populated more by our new shooters than our veteran shooters that's that's not bad though that's, that's good. good yeah yeah, yeah. Veteran it, it shooters speaks are to also- retention traveling too they're doing a little bit more travel i see as well like nova scotia quebec ontario no not really no oh, okay yeah, no. i thought There's that they were other. no most of the guys going uh to nova scotia myself and a couple of new guys so oh okay but, uh, yeah so the match was uh fantastic and then when the match was over the way we do a black badge in new brunswick is you've got to do six hours in the classroom 10 hours on the range and you got to do a level two so we cram it all in the one weekend so um, when the match is over, the two black badge participants were given their certificate and their pin and sent out into the wild. You're free, my children. Go, go prosper. So, um, black badge. yeah. So I shot uh, my 45 because I was out of nine mil ammo. So I brought down my 1911 and 45 and shot classic major. So it was funny. I had won the match overall. Not that that's a thing. Um, it and is, it is if you win it and you're not an open. Right. <laughs> so, um, but they had scored me as minor. So I was ahead really? by like, yeah, I was ahead by like 10%. And then when we got it corrected, it was ahead by like 14%. So right. it didn't change my state, my stages though. Like I won all but three stages. I think I was hoping that was going to help me, but it didn't. So no. you were going to say, I was just going to say that I saw some of the video of the stages you shot, you kicked butt. Like you really, really did. Particularly, there was one stage where you were on a um, pallet, pallets, stack of pallets, yeah. stack of pallets, and you jumped off. And as you jumped off and landed, you were actually already drawing your pistol. Now, I was saying to you that that was fantastic. You were like a stealth cat, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I could see somebody who some of the more um, lesser experienced shooters they would stay on it or they'd jump off of it and they would go through the motions but it'd be so much more time because they wanted to be you know they're safe basically yeah so the intent of that stage was that the pallets would be stacked like a podium where you go up and get your awards right yeah different different levels and the start position was at the top of the stack and the intent of the match director was that you would take a couple of steps down on one side shoot the targets on the side of the wall go to the next level, shoot through the port, step on down the other side. So start on the start on the center at the top highest level and either start all the way at the bottom on the left and then move your way back up and down to the right or go to the right and make your way over to the left. And right before, about halfway through the walkthrough, I realized there was no rear fault line. There was nothing oh. keeping me on the pallet. So I was like, I'm jumping off this thing. <laughs> I'm going to, on the beep, I'm going to grab my gun I'm jumping, and as I land, I'm drawing. And, uh, yeah, it pretty much worked. So the first stage, if you go watch my Instagram, you, you should be following me on my Instagram if you want to see my gun stuff because there's nothing on my um, – and I'll post some – yeah, there's nothing on my Facebook. Follow the show on Instagram. 
follow Kelly on Instagram, follow hunting gear guy on Instagram. That's where all my gun stuff is. Anyway, uh, if you look at my videos on Instagram, you'll notice yeah. a big, cl- a big cloud of smoke around my head during the very first stage. And that's cause I got to the line and I forgot I had a cigar in my mouth and I just left it there and shot the stage <laughs> with my stogie in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> somebody actually asked me is that x metal bullets that's smoking like that well, no man no, i haven't shot a, i haven't shot yeah. yet <laughs> where do you think the smoke's coming from <laughs> so the only thing missing was the glass of whiskey right um, I know. yeah so then i um uh this week i swapped some scopes around and i actually got some optics back on my sks that's in the matador arms chassis show the matador i'm wearing my hat tonight so um yeah i've got to go cite that in i've got to go cite the wk because the scope that was on my slr is now in the wk and the scope that i bought from jeff reese is now in the slr and it's like super lightweight oh my god i'm sure like i swapped the bolt carrier group and i swapped the bolt and the gun is like i gotta put it back on the scale i got pictures of it on the scale before also i bought on cgn a 17 inch carbon fiber handguard Whoa. Yeah, it's a ridiculous Sounds amount pricey. of money that I can't say on the air because someone's going to hear it and I'm going to get in trouble. So, um, yeah, it's uh, brand new, unused, but, you know, sold as priced accordingly. Yeah. A um, couple of bucks off of retail anyway. Um, yeah. So that's also going to go on the SLR. And the 15-inch um, hand handguard, handguard that's from uh, Maple Ridge on the SLR will go on the Modern Sporter when it comes in. So handguard situation sorted um and then at the shop this week i'm working on a browning blr that needs to be reblued. so um got the barrel to the second stage of sanding and uh now i'm at the part where i'm doing the um receiver by hand we we've got polishing wheels but if a receiver is flat surface you really need to do it by hand because the wheel doesn't do so good on the flat surfaces so we gotta do it old school so that's uh that's it for me adriel what about you uh let's see here i've got i um one of the guys at our club knows sketchup really well and he put our entire uh range into sketchup and now i put my whole match into sketchup so uh here's what that looks like you guys can't see this but the viewers can here's what it looks like in 3d so it's the whole the whole shooting match, I think, is is the correct terminology uh, when you when you're doing this kind of thing. The whole 3D shooting match, uh, <laughs> and uh, the cool thing is, you can download the viewer on your phone, and you can be at the match checking it Sweet. out and look at it in 3D and, move and rotate it and, and enlarge. The, yeah, yeah, wow, all the stuff on there. So, uh, it's too bad you need a, a degree in chemical engineering. And work six months uh, for NASA to figure it out. Or if you deal in wood and you make like decks and that kind of thing, because then you have to do this kind of thing if you want to be able to mock up anything. So the well, guy, how the do guy we mock who, up uh, things before SketchUp. What's that? We mock stuff up before SketchUp. We yeah, use a pencil and craft paper and ooh, oh, yeah. rulers. Oh. Rulers, measurements. Yeah. Yeah. We were living in caves using abacuses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, this is. Uh, it's hard to design the objects. I can't do that, but I can copy and paste objects and I can move them where I want them to be and rotate them to like different positions and copy and paste a bunch of times. And then I'm so done. So you get your friend to bad. get your friend to design the objects and you, you just... download them off of the 3d warehouse. They had a, a set okay. of uh, USPSA props that was extremely complete. We added a couple of our uh, specific props for, uh, uh, for our matches, like we've got a car, we've got like a, a couple of VTACs and there, there a couple of other things that weren't in that USB, USPSA prop list that we added in, but now we've got everything. Now we, we can just put it all out. So yeah, very neat. And now cool. if people download that before they go to the match and they're setting up in the morning, there's no questions about like, about how far should this be? What should it look like? What's the sight line supposed to be? You can really check the sight lines really nicely on there and uh compare that to real life and it'll be you know pretty pretty tight yeah yep. oh, cool what else did you mm, i finished my review on the gsg mp 4022 yeah what's your thoughts on that it is a very neat plinker for people who want a neat plinker 
just the look and feel of it the fact that uh you can shoot it from the hip and waste a gravel pit or something like that mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um I had so I, I cracked that. Uh, this was actually on loan from my buddy, my uh, my buddy uh, Kurt, and uh, I cracked it open because I saw a YouTube video where the guy's like, "See this trigger bar? I had to like insert this thing in here to make to make the trigger bar tighter and make it so that the trigger didn't travel so much." And I cracked it open, and it had already had that done. So I was like, "Oh, cool! They're doing it from the factory now." No, it was cool. my buddy. He had already <laughs> he already did it. Yeah, he didn't let me know. So I was like, ah, oh well, whatever. <laughs> now the now that's out there. But uh, no, it was uh, it was really interesting. I, I kind of want to try the nine millimeter version now, just to just to see what that's just all about. See the differences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I've got a three gun match on Saturday that I'm match directing. So I've cool. got a. I don't have to do anything. I just need to bring everything out. It's all all the all the work's pre done. Um and the weather won't be total crap, which is very nice. It won't be Sweet. zero. Or, it's not. Or it's not going to be uh, snowing. We haven't had any snow in Edmonton. It's it's been snowing in Calgary, uh, mm-hmm. but no no snow in Edmonton here. It's been dry, yeah, so it'll okay. be minus one to nine, which is all right. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, that's about it for me. To be honest, I'm uh, um avoiding purchasing accessories right now. I am not what? going Why? to purchase. Any semi because if the liberals get in, I'm not getting paid oh, for anything. Okay, because you're not getting anything now. Yeah. yeah, so what's the point in getting like a, a new four four hundred dollar handguard? Yeah. Yes. I was just thinking <laughs> about that as you're as you <laughs> like the thing about that that four end is that okay, well, there, there's other firearms that an AR right. four four end will fit on. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, but like long story short, I'm not buying I'm not buying any uh, On, you any know what? accessories. This is what the listener was is emailing us about. We are talking like they already won. I'm well, not. I'm not changing anything until after the election because it's still going to take what two years before they get this plan implemented. If they do, if you, so. if, if any of our listeners were tight on cash and they had three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars in semi-auto firearms but they're actually tight on cash they may want to consider selling some of them and that's not me being alarmist that's me being realistic no that's you being totally alarmist Mm -mm, mm -mm. the liberal party is in the lead right now in the polls a strong lead so yes they're in the strong lead to be I saw either, that either, uh, today they weren't minority it, or majority right now. Right now, as it stands today, how Might is change. that possible? No, that's that's been the story for a while. There's been a couple of like, points where it's like fifty fifty between the liberals and conservatives. There's never been a point where it's like where the the polling is. How shown. is it possible? He 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 fires Jody. He blocks the RCMP investigation of Level N. Mm-hmm. Um, short memories, remember? How? Yeah, but he keeps doing stuff, Kelly. I know. How many that's why you have. File? Right, I mean, there's no one in in Alberta voting for him. Like, there's literally, I can tell all my friends and family not to vote for conservative, and uh, it will matter for not because all of Alberta is conservative. <laughs> we will be a fully conservative province. There will be no liberal seats here, uh, and it won't matter because uh, uh, you know the, uh, the Atlantic provinces get basically the same amount of votes as Alberta with like half the population. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's so messed up. We 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 Alberta has the highest population for the least representatives uh, federally. Right. So uh, yeah, and and that's that's why if you look at popular vote, the conservatives and liberals are very close. But the right. problem is there's so with such an inefficient vote. There's so it's such a high concentration of conservative voters uh, in Alberta and Saskatchewan and and parts of BC. Uh, where the conservatives were going to win anyway. So the, the liberals are right now well positioned to uh, get them more seats than, than the conservatives. Do you remember one of the liberal promises um, for the last election was to change the way that yep. the vote was done and with respect to a like popular vote? And that was yep. quickly yeah as soon of as course. as soon as they got in power. Yeah, another I'm lie. Not, I'm not like a, a a separatist or something like that, but like. At some point, this starts to really look like we are getting the we're getting shafted here in Oklahoma. You're getting pretty bad, pretty bad. Fruit. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Not only not only are you um, paying the welfare payments for the maritime provinces and Quebec, the Quebec idea that, has the largest. The idea that Quebec yeah. is a have not province literally makes me vomit. 
It yeah. makes me vomit. It's disgusting. They're a very well-to-do rich province with all these special clauses and exemptions and their own debates. Just like it, it just makes me want to vomit all these special considerations that they get. And yet they're the ones blocking the pipeline. Like talk about yeah. butting the hand that feeds like idiots. You're on Alberta's welfare tit just like the rest of us. And yet you won't let the pipeline through. You're not fooling anybody. It's because you want more welfare. You want to negotiate the pipeline. You're not fooling anybody. Don't give me, don't cry the environment to me when you're dumping uh, tons of sewage into the St. Lawrence. Like just stop it. You're not fooling anyone. And we're all sick to death of you. If anybody should separate, it should be them, but they'll never separate because if they separate, uh, where's your welfare going to come from? You'll actually have to stand your own two feet. Maybe, maybe then you won't be able to subsidize daycare to the tune of seven dollars a day. Well, when Denis, when, no, no, hold on. When Denis, bit, but... when Denis took his gunsmith course, the tuition was three thousand dollars. The right. Quebecers who took the same course, their tuition was forty dollars. Does that make any sense? Like they, they, all those special deals for their own people because Alberta's paying for it. Like, and, and no, Adriel, why would they get a penny a day after they separate? Why would they get a penny? Like if you're, if you separate, you're 100% gone, start starving to death, turn in North Korea, eat your dead. I don't care. Like you're not getting any more of anybody's tax dollars. If the West separates, that's it. They can they can they can stand on their own two feet because not only are they currently standing on their own two feet, they're paying for the rest of us out east. And yeah, if uh, Alberta does separate, we're screwed. Well, maybe then New Brunswick and Nova Scotia will stop being so goddamn lazy and start developing their own natural resources like Newfoundland did. You can look it up. Newfoundland, New, New Brunswick New, has New, lots of natural resources. New, like, New, oh. Kelly, you don't even know. Well, you probably do know, but New Brunswick and, and New, Nova Scotia are not anywhere near developing their natural resources. We are sitting on billions with a B of barrels of oil underneath us, and we won't develop it. No, no fracking way. Ha, ha, ha. You're so clever, you damn yeah. bum. You know, you won't frack up your own province because you don't have to because Alberta keeps sending you welfare payments. Put Long this story province short, to- Alberta <laughs> is, uh, yeah, we're... There's nothing I can do sitting in Alberta to to influence this election except for fund uh, conservatives in liber- in uh, in other ridings. Um, yeah. And uh, the Liberal Party is in the lead right now, so yeah. I don't care. Like I I I'm I am not getting rid of any of my firearms, but I'm not buying any accessories because if I have to sell that firearm back to the government, and I have, they're not going to give me the money for the accessories. They're not going to give me four hundred dollars for a four end. They'll give me list price for an ar yep and that's, that's it and, and that's it anyway that's uh that's what i've been up to that's really, what you've been up to yeah i've really been so much for ripping question. through the show eh yeah. i know well it's like we, we've got two more weeks of this so the, the what this yeah. we have one more show after this and then it's the election and we get to see whether we're totally screwed or not whether three gun is uh is obliterated as a sport. <laughs> My hobby is toast. Uh, uh, I'll probably go to Ipsic maybe after that. Ipsic shotgun, manual division. No, I'll just go Ipsic yeah. pistol. Why bother? I'm not. Oh I'm my not, god! I'm not put all the rules on just to shoot three gun. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ips- okay. Ipsic shotgun with a with a pump. Anyways, sorry. No, right, Kelly. Okay. Well, I didn't do much because I had to work last weekend. But what I did do this week was we released some of the. Of uh, our maple seeds to the public again. So we're out in BC and Alberta and Ontario. I'm going to leave that part to the upcoming events. So I'm not going to talk about those until we get to there. Um, but I also set up a sh- what? But you just did. Yeah, I know, but I'm going to be a little bit more specific when okay. we get to the event section. Okay, so what I also did was I set up a shoot with my tribe. When I'm now your um, losers club. Yeah, they're my tribe. Hashtag my tribe. These are the ladies that were at the uh, calendar shoot. But they're like, we are some really hot. Yeah, we actually are hot. (laughs) (laughs) Ladies. Ladies. But they're my tribe. These are people that I want to hang out with. These are people who think like me. Uh, These are people who just are pretty. Drink like you. No, I don't drink anymore. They're pretty fantastic. I know. I just announced on the Slam Fire Radio that Kelly doesn't drink anymore and we're not going to get any more shotguns. <laughs> we didn't get the first ones you got drunk and asked for. Yeah, we're just going to skip over that. Okay. 
So I set up a shoot for Monday. I know it's Monday coming up. Was there an intervention? I don't understand. Why are you off the liquor? I'm upset. Why are you off the liquor? Oh, you're not. Never mind. I'm not off the liquor. I am <laughs> <Okay>. the liquor. <laughs> no, I I am totally, I'm going totally no sugar, no wheat, no any of that stuff. So anything that is not grown or raised. Uh, juniper uh, berries are grown and turned into gin. <laughs> Get some. Okay. Just leave me alone. <laughs> no, peer healthy. pressure. <laughs> Okay. Yes, that's right, Adriel. So Monday, I'm going shooting. The only problem is, I think I need to go and get some ammo. I'm working from home tomorrow, so I might do a quick trip to SFRC. By the way, they have a sale on right now. It's 18% for Thanksgiving. Just go online and do Thanksgiving, and you get 18% off. Okay. Uh, I told my workmate that I share an office with that I'm going shooting on Monday, and she goes, can I come? So I'm going to be bringing her. She's a new shooter, and I'm also going to be bringing her daughter. So that's... Awesome. And what else? Calendars taking shape. Uh, and yeah, you should. So I'm going to be posting on the CCFR. I'm going to be posting on some of the teasers, quote unquote. Uh, some of the ladies that were in the calendar. I'm going to be um, doing some information about that. And so it's just watch for that. But these real ladies, like Trevor says, they're really, really hot. And it was a really fun shoot. Two questions. And, what? Will you no. Want it? Oh, all right. Next question. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, are the uh, months is sponsorship still available? No, the sponsorship uh, the months are not available. But if anybody is interested in doing the biweekly draws, so a prize of either fifty anywhere from fifty to one hundred dollars, uh, just let me know. I'm going to be sending that out and posting that on uh, CCFR as well. Tracy does those every two weeks, a live video, and people win it. So how you win that is you register your calendar because each calendar is marked with a unique number or code. You go online to the um, website that's listed on your calendar, you register it, and then you win things. Hey, right you're through. not allowed to play this year. Why not? I uh, seem to be good at it. Yeah, you're really good at it. The first, <laughs> first year that happened with the calendar, how many prizes did you win? Uh, I think two. three. Two. Two. Yeah. At least Two, maybe three. Mm -hmm. Did you win anything last year? Uh, no. No. Okay, so you're not that good at it. <laughs> I won something else last year. Oh yeah, the maple seed coin thing. Yeah. Yeah, you did win that. You mm -hmm. actually won a scope, did you not? Yep. And then you promptly sold that to Trevor, right? Yes, not promptly, but I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. All right, that's it for me. Upcoming events, uh, level two Ipsic match, and why don't you talk about this, Trevor? Because you're running it. Trevor, hello. Uh, yeah, no, that's uh, hold that's on. this weekend. I'm with... busy having a pissing contest on Twitter with some liberal. Okay, uh, you know what? We're, we're doing you... a, that's that's we're an awful place. Twitter is yeah, an awful okay, place. Yeah, okay, and you're lead host, so go ahead and read the upcoming events while I fight on Twitter. <laughs> I have no idea about this. Is important. This someone is, someone is wrong on the internet, <laughs> and Trevor I has I to correct no them. Okay, so let me Twitter. show you how to do these. As okay, Ipsic, I will do these. Go and go and. You just said you had no with, idea. You know what? Is an Ipsic match Thompson Corner uh, near Fredericton, October twelfth. If you want to register, do like everyone else does. Go to practice score, and okay, then there's more so in the mirror machine the next day. Right, level two, October thirteenth. Go to practice score. Thank you, Trevor. You're welcome. <laughs> From Ryan McLean, he asked us to read this in our upcoming events. Uh, so the first one is the Petawa PRS Club is putting on an intermediate PRS clinic with Dave Preston and Ken Sanowski. By the way, Dave Preston, he's the guy that won the um, Meaford Long Range Steel Challenge. Fantastic shooter. Ken Sanowski, he came in, I think, fourth. Don't quote me. But he came in the top five anyways. And they are two of the top shooters in the U.S. Uh, this will be taking place on October 19th and 20th weekend in Petawawa. Um, and don't miss out on taking one of the best PRS clinics in 2019. For more information, go to the uh, Petawawa PRS Clinic Match Facebook group. So just go on over to Facebook. He's also sent us another one about Petawa PRS Club as well. They will also be running for their season finale in practice on October 26th and 27th. So the next weekend, there'll be a full day practice on Saturday and then a 10-stage match on the Sunday as well. 
For more information, again, go to the PRS, the Petawawa PRS Club Match Facebook page. And I just wanted to say, hi, Morgan. He runs that page. Okay. Uh, I put in this stuff. This is the Maple Seeds events that I was talking to you guys about. Maple Seed is, uh, so we're having our final events for this year. We have a few that have been sold out. So uh, I did not post them here. But we have some other ones that have been released to the public. Squamish Valley Rod and Gun Club in Squamish, BC. They're going to be having one on October 20th. It still has spots in it. Kamloops Target Shooters Association, Kamloops, BC, obviously, October 28th. It still has spots. Sherwood Park, uh, I'm going to actually not even talk about that because, Adriel, it is officially sold out as of today. I sent also, some notes to some people, and by the time some of them got to it, it was already sold out. Yeah. So Frontenac Rifle Pistol Club, which is my hometown, and I'm going to be there in Kingston, Ontario, November 10th has spots available as well but there's only one or two left so if you're interested go and do that because that is the only event in ontario that le- that is left that does not have that's not sold out basically the other ones are sold out if you'd like to register for these events go to um maplecedrifleman.com check out the dates register you know come on out but that's it for the 2019 season. And then we're going to be starting in January to plan 2020. Adriel will take, be taking part in that as well because we love him. Okay. That's it for Adriel. Do you got anything else for three guns or anything like that? Nah, you it's, said it, you had something season's going on. wrapping up. Just the crazy people in Alberta are still shooting. Uh, we've got a match here at Chaz tomorrow or the day after. Day after. Yeah. Tomorrow's Friday. Okay. Yeah, okay. Hey, why not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when we Trevor, talk really- uh, uh, Mr. Mead is asking if you need help with the match, help setting up. Um, no, the boys, uh, the losers club are going there Friday and Larry will point and grunt and tell them what to do. Cool. Yep. But thanks, Doug. That's pretty efficient. Oh yeah. works great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he was actually going to cancel. And, uh, like I said last week, Mark Manderson said not on our watch. So the boys are like rallied to the cause and we'll go there and do the work for him. But it looks like he actually got a lot of it done already anyway, which he wasn't supposed to do. He was supposed to rest his knee, but uh, yep. So they on it. They on it. I was supposed to be there earlier, but there's no way I can get away until the end of the day. So I won't be there until at least 630, which leaves us barely an hour's light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm setting up tomorrow for, I'm going to, oh, you know what else I'm going to do this weekend? Forgot! Uh, I'm going to be doing a maple seed in Stittsville, which is Ottawa, basically. So I have to leave tomorrow after work and go and set up for that. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Yeah, no way. Mm-hmm. Okay, why don't we go to the news? Shooting in Germany. Adriel, you put this in? Yeah, Let's there was talk a uh, there was a shooting in Germany, um, and one of the uh, things that caught my eye was uh, it was uh, two firearms were used. One of them was a Ludi's uh, homemade sub gun. Have you mm-hmm. guys ever heard heard of one of those? No, nope. they're like really old school sub guns, homemade. Uh, I think it was in the Anarchist Cookbook or something as old as that. It's like oh. how to how to make your own sub gun from no gun parts whatsoever. You take a bunch of like home hardware stuff and you make yourself a fully automatic wow. uh, nine millimeter submachine gun. And I believe that was one of the firearms that was used. Wow. Which is yeah, I don't know how you stop that. That no, I don't no, think you can. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that was the only thing I wanted to raise out of it. it okay. Just odd. Yeah. And we talked about that. We're going to be talking about this a little bit in the uh, upcoming interview. The CSS, sorry, CSAAA, it announced that the industry uh, is going to be impacted um, by Ottawa if we have some things that are coming up. Yeah, the interesting thing here is they, they put together some, some real numbers on what the hunting and sport shooting industry uh, does for Canada. Uh, mm-hmm. So some of the some of the interesting numbers out of here would be eight point five billion dollars uh, on hunting and sport shooting last year, uh, yep. five point nine billion to Canada's GDP, and uh, hunting and sport shooting accounted for forty eight thousand full time equivalent jobs in Canada, resulting in six point four billion dollars in labor income. So. Uh, never mind the uh, cost to implement and run the program that they're talking about. This is the this is this is the other side of the coin that's going to be impacted. Uh, is those people are going to lose their uh, many of those people are going to lose their jobs, and uh, that is going to be impacted. 
Right. So it's not going to be a twenty dollar, uh, a twenty billion dollar deficit per year. It's going to be a twenty five billion dollar deficit. Twenty thirty. Well, when deficit. you start, we don't know those. until they start yeah. spending the money and they start just adding it to Canada's credit card. So we won't know. Yeah. Do we have a credit card? Is it like a black card? It is because it the it's the, unlimited? the limit is very high. <laughs> <laughs> there those, is no limit. Those bankers love uh, love. Oh man, like so. There's some people who think that we should uh, continue to add more to it. Like Ontario, you guys uh, each owe uh, what is it like twenty thirty thousand dollars in like for every man, woman, and child okay. in Ontario. I, I'm debt. still trying to pay pay off the hydro right now that Ontario has accumulated. Yeah. So I can't I can't do that. Hydro's power, I'm sorry. Right? Hydro is power. Yes. Yeah. Although we're, we're the we're the biggest hydro producer and we sell it down to the U.S., but we still mm. can't pay off our own. Okay, yeah. that's not anyway, even. Anyway, so yeah, it's, it's it's interesting because uh, uh, Trevor, I think when when we were first talking about this uh, platform, the thing that you were mentioning was we should talk about the job loss and the economic loss, and this is uh, this is painting a very clear picture of it's the not e- economic level, loss. And we know this. Right. It's worse because SNC Lavalin was only six thousand jobs. This is but more, and that doesn't it's, it's... matter because Trudeau doesn't care. Correct. I'm it was never kidding. about the jobs. It was always about the connections and the corruption. Let's <laughs> talk about guns. Guns. Are Let's talk about guns. Yeah. What about new new gun stuff? I haven't seen these before. Have you guys seen these? Remington has a V three survivalist. Survivalist. Yeah, Ooh. it's semi automatic. It's a bird hit, bird's head grip. 18.5 inch barrel scabbard shotgun. Oh, it's a uh, yeah, I've seen this before. And it it's comes a Versamax, right? Well. It's so the Versamax uh, in a three inch chamber for first, whatever reason, right. Remington thought Versamax, and then we're also going to have this V3, but the V3 is only a three inch chamber and it's going to be not all this... Versamax are three and a half. Oh, it's, Remington is just, ah, I hate their name. Yeah. Anyways, V3 survivalist. It comes with a machete. Right. It does. I saw that. Comes with a scabbard and a machete and uh, five round capacity. Yeah. Five plus one. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is and... uh, uh, this is a real meme gun. <laughs> what is the use of this thing? You couldn't even use this for grouse. You'd need like a, a regular stock on it. I think it comes with a regular stock too, doesn't it? It should. Otherwise, it's uh... dumber than dumb. Full <laughs> stock? Full yeah. shotgun flared, stock. Full flared loading it. ports yeah. over so controls. It comes. Uh, it comes with a full shotgun stock as well, which I yeah. guess you could use with the scabbard too. Just have it poking out a little bit more. Then you could use it on your quad or whatever. Yeah, I still prefer my setup. The takedown. You, it mm. folds into a small bag, and then you put the stock on, and there you go. You've got a practical, functional firearm that's reliable because it's pump. Oh, I don't see anything about chokes here. It doesn't say. Oh, I hate. That like cylinder bore shotguns are extremely useless to me. I need chokes. I concur. It defeats the purpose of the platform if you can't choke it. Yeah, you need to control. Anyway, taking all that versatility and chopped and yeah, yeah, yep, yep. I concur. Uh, you concur. Great. Okay, the Ruger PC carbine <laughs> is coming into Canada, and it's got. It. Do, are, do you want to talk about this one? No, not really. Sorry, I'm just like jumping way ahead here. Uh, yeah. No, that's good. They got uh, a free you, float uh, handguard, non-restricted. Dumb. dumb? This, yep. It uh, looks cool, well, though. I, no, it doesn't. No, of, it what doesn't. If you just, what if you just like it to look cool? No, it doesn't look cool because it's not censored in the handguard. Anytime there's a barrel in a handguard that's offset, it's dumb. Hmm. The CZ little tactical point two is like that, too. It's mm-hmm. a nice, cool, round handguard, but the barrel's at the top third. Like, this also is... Yeah, I'd rather take the PCC as is than this, or Midwest Industries has an entire chassis, kind of like what they have for the M14. That makes the Ruger PCC really cool. That one looks good. You should be talking about that one, not this thing. That's ridiculous. I respect the disagree. <laughs> Trevor has and just because we don't agree. I don't like. I don't like the look of it either. Though it is ambidextrous. Well, that's because you're yeah. a lady of distinguishing taste. You understand what looks good and what doesn't. <laughs> this doesn't. That's right. It doesn't. Two against no. one, Adriel. You're wrong. All right. I'm it's wrong. gonna have a short length of pull as well. It's right. Just, no. Useless. Yeah, it's yeah. useless. It's... You can buy it. As, speaking of useless, you can also buy it in forty cal. <laughs> there. Can there. we can we agree on that? We yes. can. Okay. There we go. <laughs> you can buy it in a forty cal, so you can I don't know shoot rocks better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So. Yeah, no. Let's see. Okay. Let's Rangeview Sports has the DPMS Oracle, which is like the cheapest AR you can get, but it's five ninety nine. <laughs> That's yep. only. Yep. And a yep. free Magpul T-shirt, by the mm-hmm. way. They right. reduced it by two hundred bucks. Yeah, no Magpul inch. on the gun, but you get a Magpul T-shirt because you yes. know you're going to start putting Magpul on it right away. It's the first <laughs> thing you're going to do with your DPMS Oracle. <laughs> yes, that rear stock has got to go and got to be replaced with something else. Yeah, yeah. Five hundred ninety nine dollars is not bad though for that. No, nope. nope. can't beat that. Nope. Get into an AR. Yep. You know? yep. Just in time for it to be purchased by the gun. Right. Exactly. Pretend it's fifteen hundred dollars. You make off like a bandit. I'm sorry. You gotta you gotta put some uh some AliExpress <laughs> hardware on there first and be like, whoa, 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 this isn't an Oracle. What it's got a free that? float handguard, it's got are you looking at those uh those core yes. next line revolvers? Yes. Let me share them for everyone else so that they can see. <laughs> I'm assuming this is like a gentleman's revolver. Am I is is that right? A gentleman okay. of the night revolver. Uh, like I don't, uh, know, I don't, I don't know what this no, is for. I don't know what this is for. This is like <laughs> if RoboCop had a wheel gun. No, this is a pimp gun. This is a pimp. No, revolver. this is not a pimp gun. No, no, no. self-respecting pimp would carry this. It's not. No, it's got like vent holes in it. I suppose I would collect a lot, a lot of lint. With, Change with the grip to it. some kind of carbon fiber woven pattern, and RoboCop would carry this thing. Mm. Yeah. So can we describe it for the listeners? It's uh, a <laughs> real wacky looking revolver. I don't know how to describe it. What is well, the this? Barrel... What's this thing on the bottom here with all the holes in it? Is that so you can uh, put a, a red that's dot a mount? That's a rail. Yeah, that's for a yeah. light. So, okay. How do we describe this thing? So off the front of the frame is just a barrel. And then over top of the barrel is it's... like a shroud shaped like a yeah. revolver barrel but it's all skeletonized and yeah. bolted over the barrel yeah. sleeve. And it's got Picatinny rail on the frame, Picatinny rail on the shroud over the barrel before the front sight, Picatinny rail on the bottom. So it's for, you know, putting red dots and flashlights on your wheel gun. That's, yeah. by the way, in 44 Magnum. <laughs> Oh, and 357. So you get right. two choices. Oh, and then there's shot the... 357. Ooh. I'm and sorry. And then there's the eight. lovely grip. Yeah. Eight shot what? 357 or six shot 44 mag. Eight shot, nice. Yeah. And yeah, Kelly, the the grip is something else. Yeah, it's very, sure. it's it's shaped like a. It's Smith a laminated. Grip. It's like a laminated. Yeah, yeah, laminated with two of the ugliest colors that you could ever Red put together. It's like peaches and cream. It's horrible. Maybe they got some other colors you can pick. I'm sure. That's maybe, or maybe you that. just don't buy it. How much is this abortion? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, like Korth, Korth it doesn't is a even say. so they're going to be sending them to uh, retailers to sell. Listen, like I say in all my black badge classes, revolvers don't matter. So let's just move on. <laughs> you know what? Somebody's right. going to buy it. Oh yeah, there's a yeah. there's a there's a sucker for every gun, Kelly. You know. Oh look at this. Okay. You should you should mention that one, Kelly. SFRC has eighteen percent off from October tenth to the fifteenth. Use code Turkey when you're ordering. <laughs> I gotta go and buy ammo tomorrow. There you go. I do it in person. All right. Uh, let's go to the main topic, shall we? Hi, everybody. Uh, tonight we have Rod Giltak on with us from the Canadian Coalition for um, Firearm Rights, uh, or the CCFR. Uh, Rod has been going across the country on hashtag Integrity Tour. So, uh, Rod, why don't you tell us all about what this tour is all about? When did it start? Who's with you? what was happening with it why and actually why did you do it well those are all great questions um so the uh, the idea of the integrity tour is i guess you know what i'm going to give you the sort of the behind the scenes explanation okay so the the real reason is the ccfr has done a ton of work we've done you know fully referenced um and academic reports we've provided all kinds of evidence um to uh to to the senate to the government to the media about the deception that's going on um, concerning, you know, licensed firearm owners and their role or lack thereof in criminal activity and and basically our our whole plight. And we just keep getting ignored. And we've it's it's just it just seems that we can't depend on the media to treat us fairly or to um, or just even to consider, you know, the lives of literally millions of Canadians that own firearms illegally. And uh, and we just really felt like uh, the, the election is coming up and we have to just get out front uh, of Canadians ourselves and take it uh, to the streets, so to speak. So we rented this 
30 foot RV <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. Tracy Wilson, myself and, uh, and our driver, uh, Sergeant Colin Saunders, um, went from Ottawa to Montreal and then from Montreal to Regina. I jumped off the tour at, um, at Toronto when we were finished there. Okay. Um, you know, and I would challenge anyone to go traveling across the country with Tracy Wilson. And, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so basically what you guys were doing was, sorry, it was, uh, I, it sounds sorry, like I lost, I can't hear you. Okay. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, oh, I can't hear anybody now. All oh. right. Oh, Let's there see it is. What we, okay. Facts. All right. So what it basically was, is a mobile bill, billboard. You ha can you describe the wrap that you had around the, uh, the RV? So the, the wrap was, uh, had, says basically on the side of it, liberal failure has Justin Trudeau's picture and a, and a few more, uh, of his henchmen's pictures on the side and just says gun owners want a safer Canada too. Um, and that the liberals have failed on crime, which is basically the simplest way to express to people what the problem is and what the situation is. And so we wanted to do a couple of things. We want to drive a billboard around rather than have a stationary billboard, which mm -hmm. is great. Just draw people's attention to the issue because hiding in the shadows has done nothing for us. Um, and also to uh, to drive and, and stop by liberal candidates' offices and see if they wanted to engage with us, as well as support some conservative and some other uh, candidates' uh, campaigns as well. And to talk to everyday Canadians just to get it out there. And, you know, just uh, it's just a demonstration of how far we'll go to get uh, the gun owners um, our, our story told. Okay. So, so you I talked about – go ahead, Trevor. No, I'll finish your thought. I was, uh, I was going to say, you, so you've talked about visiting the liberal um, candidates. How did that go? Were you able to get anybody to speak with you? Did you get uh, doors uh, shut on you? What happened there? Well, we definitely got doors pulled closed on us and okay. uh, some very unwelcoming uh, <laughs> vibes. There. Do we have video of this? Do we have video every time this happened? We have video on a few of them, yeah, yeah. Um, and okay. some pictures as well. Now, but, Rod, um, did you yeah. cold call these guys or did they know that you'd be stopping by? Did they figure out your um, your your route and were they able to put together where you'd be stopping next or did you give them a heads up? What happened there? We didn't give them a heads up. No, no, we wouldn't because they would just tell us not to come. Right. right. <laughs> and I mean, it's uh, all these pe uh, places are public places, so we can roll up, ask them if they want to engage in a discussion with us. If not, that's no problem. We'll leave. Um but uh, so anyway, the I'm sure most people know that um, that uh, most liberal candidates would not give us the time of day. And that's probably the, the sharp, the smart play for them, right. uh, because none of them are going to stand toe to toe in a gun debate with uh, with Tracy or I. Um, but of course, one did. And I'm sure you guys are well aware that Minister Bill Blair uh, thought he could uh, talk his way around Tracy and I didn't go you were, well. You were surprised about that, weren't you? Well, yeah, absolutely. I was surprised. It's 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 far more beneficial for them to Did continue not. to prey on the ignorance of of everyday Canadians that don't know anything about this topic. That's really easy to do because they can't be, you know, they can't be uh, opposed. Um, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, if they engage with us, then they're going to have a real hard time because we're we're cognizant of all the facts and, you know, uh, these really complex topics like how do you store a restricted firearm legally in Canada. Um, but uh, Bill Blair, and to be honest with you, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think it's just his arrogance. He had been he had been running the show for so long. He thought, okay, well, there's nobody that can stand against me. And then, uh, so he thought, uh, yeah, I'll invite these people in for a chat. And uh, obviously, there's a video circulating around to show the results of what happened. Right. So coat of arms was there. They videoed. He allowed the video the taping as well. Well, he went all, he went all in. So not only did he actually talk to us, but he was like, "Oh yeah, bring your cameras. What's what what could be the worst that could happen?" You know, That's, I'm not even joking. Like it's not like, saying that to well, me. Well, you watched exactly the video. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah. So now, go let ahead. Let me jump in here for a sec, Kelly. So those, you know, you mentioned the two groups that you went to talk to, MPs and uh, everyday Canadians. Let's touch on that for a second. How many? everyday Canadians did you come across that weren't gun owners that you were able to engage with? Did that happen at all? Were you approached and asked what this was all about? How did those conversations take, you know, how did they pan out? Those ones were interesting. So we, we had a lot of people walk up um, to us. Well, okay. First of all, on the back of the bus, it says honk if you support licensed gun owners or legal mm -hmm. gun owners. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, just nonstop honking 
almost everywhere we went. We didn't get a lot of honks in downtown Montreal. Um, we didn't <laughs> get, I know it's weird. Um, maybe the sign was covered up or something. And we didn't get a lot of honks in right downtown Toronto. But as soon as we were out, out of the city limits, it was honk city, if that's a term. I'm making it a term. <laughs> it is now. Yeah. And once it's set on Slamfire, it goes straight it, to the Urban yeah. Dictionary. Yeah. yeah. So um, now we did. The only place we really ran into people that really didn't know what this was all about was around the Liberals' offices. <laughs> um, and uh, there was a couple of conversations. And if I were to kind of lump them together and kind of give you the vibe of that, it's people that don't have a clue. And they're either scared or they just want to be viewed as good Canadians. So they're just like, wow, just we got to do something about these guns. I'm like, well, hang on. You know, so I kind of go through a little bit of stuff with them. It's like, well, wait a second. Who's got those guns, right? Do you think it's people that would get a firearms license that are shooting? You know, no, no, it's not them, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And do you think it's people like me? No, no, it's not you. But we just, we got to do something. And it's mm. really hard to, it's really hard to talk. And there's a lot of people that are at that level of ignorance. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, right? That No, that's where exactly they just, what it is. In its truest form, it's not being insulting. It's pure ignorance. And it's I have pure, heard that a lot, especially in, in reference to the American uh, uh, situation. We it have to do something. There. We can't just yep. do thoughts and prayers. We don't do thoughts and prayers in Canada. We get very, like, mass shootings are extremely rare here. So we don't, that's not a trope here. Well, and, and, and the problem, if you want to kind of dig down and find the root of that problem, it's it's that you have disingenuous and dishonest leaders, and you have uh, a media that is incredibly dishonest as well. Biased is what they so, are. So, well, yeah, I mean, they're bought, they're bought and paid for is what they are. Well, yeah, and the reason why I say dishonest and not just say, well, they just don't really know, it's because we've put out reports. I've we've we've actually sent. So I'll give you an example. The media bias report and the report on the doctors, we sent that to 400 directly to 400 journalists that have written or uh, contributed to a firearms related story in the last two years in mm -hmm. Canadian media. So I sent it directly to them. You know how many people got back and said, oh, really, is this true? Or, you know, tell me more. Zero. Wow. Yeah. None. And so <laughs> when you think about that, it's like, surprising. well, what what do we do? And. You know, there's a, I think there was people out there that were like, well, why are you guys driving around in this RV? You know, that's not going to change anything. It's like, well, hang on. It, when, the, when, the, when the media, no matter how nice and how sophisticated and how slick you are, like the CCFR, I mean, we're the most sophisticated gun organization in that we, you know, we've made explainer videos and we use all kinds of different media and all the rest of that stuff. And we still can't get our, the accurate story told. It's like, well, what are we going to do? Just lie down and take it? So that's why we decided we're going to, you know what we'll do is we'll, We'll wrap a 30-foot RV and we'll park it in front of people's, you know, constituency offices and drive it down, you know, the major cities, uh, down the main main highways and roads of major cities in Canada and, and start this conversation ourselves if need be. So that's really how the, you know, why the project is is important and it's it's basically all we can do right now. Well, I mean, a, a, a billboard, like you can, you can cook a good 10, 20 grand on a, on a billboard campaign fairly easily. So this is just as good, better. Who even looks better. You're anymore. reaching more people. Yeah, yeah you I, are. I think so too. I think I think we're reaching more people and we're personalizing it. A billboard, you know, you see it a couple of times. You may or may not think about it. You drive by, and, and that's it. Its effect is very limited, um, okay. unless it's something that, like, if it's something like drink Coca Cola, you'd be like, well, yeah, I, I feel like a Coca Cola right now. But this is this is far more complex, right? Mm -hmm. This is this is a far more complex thing. So it's it's really not something that a billboard is going to do a, a great job. So we, we want to make sure that we're engaging. We're engaging with the with the stakeholders. We're engaging with everyday Canadians. And uh, and we're also rallying gun owners, too. So right. while we're not changing liberals' minds, per se, we're also rallying gun owners and showing them, hey, you know what? There's some of us they are going to get off our asses and we're going to do something about it. So maybe you can get off your ass, too, and, and help. One of the things that you guys have been doing is doing live updates. Tracy's been do doing a great job of this. So every time that you stop at, whether it's a gun store or you stop at the a liberal candidate's office or even a conservative uh, candidate's office, which we've seen some conservative candidates come out and uh, and talk. So that's fantastic. But she also did one recently um, about Thunder Bay. You guys are in Thunder Bay and... Uh, People are coming out. People are coming to the gun stores to say hi, get their picture taken with the van. But in Thunder Bay, people were coming out and, and actually giving uh, Tracy um, money or gas cards, different things like that. So you, so basically donations to get across the country and, and saying what a fantastic job everybody is doing. Farther north, I think you, the uh, 
the integrity tour was getting in Ontario, the more response as well. People are really responding to it. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they are really responding to it. And, and, and we actually got gas cards and Tim Hortons cards and stuff long before that. We got that in, uh, the, I think the first ones came in Ajax. We were uh, trolling Mark Holland's office and, yeah. uh, and also going to talk. <laughs> we kind of chased him around a little bit, but we never got a chance to talk to him. He um, refused? Well, he, he wasn't there. And then we we're trying to find out where he, I guess he was door knocking. So oh, okay. for me, I'm fantasizing about, wouldn't it be great if he's walking with his people down the road and we've got our four-way <laughs> flashers just trailing him with the, with the liberal fail <laughs> van, right? Um, but we weren't able to locate him. Um, we located, obviously, his, uh, his campaign signs and we hijacked his, uh, his hashtag. So now, and he's got it on his campaign sign. So it says, hashtag fight for number four, Y-O-U, fight for you. If you go into Twitter and you put in, Hashtag fight for you. It's all CCFR stuff. And it's actually on his campaign poster. <laughs> so we're, you know, we're, uh, we're working it. And, uh, and, and the support has been really great. And the donation people, a lot of people have been donating when we, when we first unveiled this project all the way through till this, until last night. I mean, people are donating and we've covered the cost of the whole tour already. Fantastic. So, wow. Yeah. It's just great. Really great. That's amazing. So um, we have a few more days left till the election. The Integrity Tour is going to be uh, headed out to Regina. Uh, but what can gun owners, what, do you, what are you suggesting gun owners do now? If there's, uh, if there's only one thing that they do, it's commit to one day's worth of work. And what that one day is, is calling all your friends and your relatives and their children, as long as they're old enough to vote, um, and your grandmother, whatever, and actually pick people up physically in your car, drive them down to the polls, especially in the in, in battleground ridings, drive them to the polls and help them just walk them right to the door and let them go vote. And you got to vote the liberals out because, you know, it's it's for every it's it's for everything right now. Um, I mean, we could talk all day about how corrupt the Canadian government is right now. I mean, it's I've never seen anything like it my whole life. But if you just if you're thinking of it from the perspective of a single issue voter, you got to you got to get the liberals nowhere near power. They are going to take your guns. And when they're done with the people that own semi-autos, then they're coming for handguns. And when, when they're done with that, it's because they've said they want Australia. It's lever actions and uh, Pumps. and pump actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's bolts. That's all. And then that's it. And that's it. And, you know, I mean, it's I, I had a I did some stuff for the podcast today. And I had Corey Levitt from Coat of Arms on, and, you know, um, I told him, and this is kind of just some more brutal honesty. I'm in a brutally honest mood today, um, just <laughs> just throwing it right in everybody's face. That's how we like probably, it. Probably because I'm, I'm, I'm on my last nerve and a half. Um, but, you know, I'll tell you, when, when it comes down to we've lost everything and we're, we're fighting for pump actions or bolt actions, I'll tell you, I'll be long gone. And the, the first hunter I, I hear complaining, I'll be like, well, you know what? Bud, you had a chance to, to stand up for your brothers and sisters, and you didn't. You couldn't care less, and now you want people to care about you? I'm sorry. Enjoy your slingshot that you're going to have or a BB gun, you know? Yeah, it looks like I'm going back to bow hunting. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's under 400 feet per second. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. Rubber tip. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, as long as it can't penetrate a, a pig's eye, which is, I guess, the test, right, to determine, uh, you know, Jeez. whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. Well, that was too spicy for you. Hey, Kelly. No, <laughs> no actually it was brutally honest and that's perfectly fine because that's where it's headed as well. If, um, yeah, well, you can, yeah. you can hear the frustration, right. And, and it's like, uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. we got two weeks left and, uh, hopefully Canada saves itself. One of the suggestions that I have is if you're not a single, um, issue voter or if your friends and family are not, then make them aware of some of the other measures that will happen because of that too, whether it's the cost to impose all of this, um, and the implications with respect to it not having an effect on, on gun crime. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the cost is interesting. The, uh, CSAAA released a, yes. a report today on, uh, on the, uh, impact to the industry so we're talking about um a couple billion in in purchase couple billion in managing the program and then a few billion a year in um uh, awesome GDP, revenue. gdp yeah and then i think the, the the number quoted there was 45 or forty-eight thousand uh jobs 
So if with with measures like this, you could assume that a, a good uh, a, a, a healthy chunk or an unhealthy chunk of of those jobs would. Uh, a lot gone. of stores would be closing down. Yeah, a lot yeah. of stores would be closing down because there are stores that just sell this kind of stuff, just sell accessories and uh, uh, restricted firearms and that kind of thing, and sporting firearms, right? So right. Uh, if those stores are gone, those jobs are gone, those investments are gone, those banks don't get their loans back because the, the, those companies are all gone. And uh, yeah, it'll make a big difference to the... Uh, uh, it'll make the long gun registry seem cheap. Because how mm. much was the long gun registry? Two billion. Right. Yeah. This is a lot more than two billion dollars. This is a ton of money to be blowing on this for no effect. They're talking about, uh, uh, and it, you know, AR-15s, and it's like, how many shootings do we have with the AR-15s? None. None. Yeah. And, None. And Adriel, it'll be just like the long gun registry. They'll say one price before the election. And then the real price will come out later. Like can they didn't publish... actually say what it was. They said that it would come out after the election. Yeah, well, this yeah, but they're still going to. Uh, they said they would tell us the price tag after the election. But whatever price tag they price tag they tell us, Kelly, will be one that they expect Canadians will find palatable. Now, the cost of the long gun registry was supposed to be two million, and ultimately ended up being two billion. So, Canadians have the shortest memories of any citizen to vote. How would you think this would be any different? Like if you don't, you're a sucker with a capital S. It's They have a track record of doing this. They tell you one thing, it turns out to be something else. So why would you ever believe anything they're gonna say when it comes to costs? Especially when they're willing to to uh, run in a deficit uh, budget yeah. for year after, right. year after year yeah. after year. And that is now, yeah. it's no longer like now we're gonna try to, it's like, nope, that's just how it's going to be. We're just going to run yeah, $25 budgets, budgets, billion, uh, uh, Nope, nope. Not even balancing themselves. We're just going to run $25 billion in, yeah. deficits every year until we're tired of it. Yeah. So, Rod, what's yeah. uh, what's next for the Integrity Tour? You're gone home, but it continues to truck on. Yes? Where to? When does it wrap up? Yeah. Um, Tracy is on her way to Winnipeg right now. She might be in Winnipeg. Hmm. or No, I think she's in Winnipeg, but she's on her way to Verdon. That's right. To see Wolverine. Um, who yep. have been Wolverine Supplies have been a really great supporter of ours, and uh, and um, they just recently donated fifteen thousand dollars to the CCFR, which was wow. uh, incredibly Amazing. appreciated. Well, it, so they're taking an active role in whether or not they'll be able to sell that kind of merchandise anymore. Mm -hmm. So you know we don't we don't get a lot of money from businesses, um, so we really appreciated their support. And then she's going to head on over to Regina and uh, and cause some trouble over there for a little while. Um, go see Ralph Goodale at least. So I think it's important. I don't yeah. think he'll be on camera. But I think well, it's he won't, after, he, after he saw what happened to Bill Blair, I don't think he'll ever. Go no, on I don't with think us. so either. Um, speaking of which, I I uh, I was uh, working on that Bill Blair video. Of course, all of it's you know kicking around out there. Rebel Media uh, yeah. did a piece on it as well, and actually their piece on it was really great. Yeah, it was. So I appreciate I that. It too. But yeah. I'm doing a CCFR version where I'm annotating the whole thing during the video. So it's going to be, it'll be, yeah, it'll be a video that you can learn something by watching and, and, uh, and it should be, should be fun to watch. Going to do the, the live fact checker, uh, scroll at the bottom, the marquee. That's like, actually, <laughs> it's, it's sort of like that. Yeah. It's not, yeah, not scrolling, it's... but it's, it's popping up. And then I freeze frame Bill's face, you know, while, you know, some stuff is explained and I don't, I that. feel sorry for you. That's going to be a lot of editing. Yeah, it, it is actually. I'm not even a third of the way through and it's, yeah. He talked I, a have, I, I gotta say, I've never seen a more professional backpedaler. That part about you're lying saying that I said people will shoot the cops. Well, okay. I actually I don't didn't watch really watch that. Well, yeah. okay. Well, I read it. Well, actually someone read it and told it to me. Like keep pedaling, Bill. Like, oh man, no you know, integrity whatsoever. None. Well, if you met somebody in your, in, in real life and that's how they behaved, you'd be like, this guy is such, you know, this guy's garbage. I wouldn't want anything to do with somebody like that. Oh, I was going to yeah. say he's such a politician. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kelly. That's what I was going to say. Well, yeah, he's he's only, thing, right? he, he might would... as well become a liberal politician. Yeah, just I the behavior is I you know I know I say this all the time right but I'm just I'm constantly shocked at how bad of how bad people they are and you know I'm always thinking well you know they're they you know they're playing for a team or oh maybe they just don't know it's just I I've always kind of tried to think you know that oh it's it's a mistake or they're not quite they've got a lot to learn even about themselves but no man 
Um, yeah, he was an interesting, like there's something wrong with him. And I'm not saying that just to denigrate him right, or just to be mean. I think there's something wrong there. And, uh, and just the ability to lie and to cost people billions of dollars and to hurt a lot of people. I just, uh, I can't, I really can't get over it, to be honest. A little bit of narcissist, you think? Yeah, well, sociopath, at least, at a minimum. Okay. It's frightening. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is frightening, man. This guy's got authority, right? Yeah, <laughs> damage. So, you can do so much damage. So my question is, uh, just a little bit around this, is what is the, the minister of again? Uh, he is the minister of border security and organized crime reduction, I think. Okay, how in the hell does that have anything to do with what we're, uh, anyway. what we're doing? Yep, nothing, Kelly. Well, Nothing. exactly. The, He's not the working on that, borders or, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, the reason that ministry exists is because, and this is, I'm just guessing, but Ralph Goodale probably went to, uh, went to Trudeau and said, listen, you are going to destroy me with this. And I've been in politics too long. I am not willing to be destroyed by this. So you better find something else. And then there's Bill Blair saying, hey, I'll do literally anything for a pension and for money. So I'll take care of that if you make me a minister. Because that's a seventy thousand dollar pay raise for them, so you know ministers yep. make anywhere from two twenty five to two fifty. Oh right. God. So yeah, it's a lot then, of money plus a pension, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So and whatever good, committees they're sitting pension. on as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and hey, for for Trudeau, it's only money. It's not even his money. He's just like, yeah, well, exactly. tack, tack it onto the deficit. So I think that's how this all came about. But I mean, I don't know. Oh wow. Okay. Well, anything else you want to give us an update on the CCFR before we let you go? Update? You mean any, any, do I want to make you d any more depressed than I already have? Is that what you really mean? <laughs> <laughs> just, keep, just keep dropping truth bombs, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. the truth is depressing. Yeah, I've had enough of it. I'll tell you that. Um, uh, no, we've got the, uh, we've got the integrity tour. We've got a couple of new, um, a couple of new explainers coming out in four or right. five days. I think the 14th and the 16th. Uh, so those, those will be fun. Those are, those are actually aimed directly at a few people. So they'll be fun to share. Um, and then the only other thing I'd, I'd remind um, your listeners uh, of is when we have explainer videos and, and videos and memes and, you know, all these things, these are tools, not just for me to share or for Tracy Wilson to share online. They're tools for you. So if you go onto the doctors for protection, the spin doctors for protection from guns, if you go on their Twitter feed, you know, drop some of those videos that we've made, you know, just continue to hammer these people with the truth. And, uh, and, and that's how we do it. It just can't be two people. So we make those tools. They're expensive. They take a lot of effort. We make them actually for you, not so much for us. Thanks again to Rod Giltaka from the CCFR coming on to talk about hashtag the integrity tour and everything that is all CCFR. Fantastic work that they're doing right now. Listener feedback. Why don't we go to the YouTube version? Um, lots of chit chatter on there right now about, uh, some of the uh, previous talk with respect to separate, uh, separation or, you know, separate, separatism, separatism. Is that a word? It yeah, is now. Some, some people were mentioning <laughs> separate extra fault lines just for Trevor. That's kind of related to separatism. That was Justin because, uh, Trevor was talking about no back fault lines mm. when, uh, on one of the stages. So he just jumped off. Uh, so Justin's going to be incorporating that into, see, every time that Trevor's around, sometimes we build rules in because of that. Did you notice that, Trevor? I, I, I have been known to create policy and rules <laughs> after being somewhere, yes. Yes. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Right. That's right. Well, it's, you've never been told you can't do it, so. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? Now it, you just fall, find you know, holes and faults where things are, and then that just has to be plugged. That's all. I I may um, be the type of person to work this, work the system, find gaps and loopholes, and exploit them. Um, this is uh, and and apparently I push boundaries a little. Yeah, a little. Some. What are you, you going to do? Even on Slam Fire Radio, I got to be me. <laughs> got to do you. Uh, and then somebody commented about the fact that I have a big liquor cabinet behind me and I'm stopped. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's Jeremy. He's actually, very astute. I actually overlaid not liquor uh, in text while, while, while we were talking here on, on your liquor cabinet <laughs> for a little while. Yeah, there's liquor on the floor still too. Okay, uh, that's about it though. Uh, listener feedback. Listener feedback is brought to you by Armory DC Gunsmith. It's a full-service gunsmith who specializes in fire armory finishing. He offers hot bluing, parkerizing, Cerakote finishes, as well as wood refinishing. Check him 
Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearm accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmiths.ca. Or you can also follow him on Facebook or Instagram or even, you know, go and visit Trevor in the store because he's working there now. Okay. Trevor, you're going to read this from Phil, though, because no, Phil's talking. Oh, jeez. <laughs> really? There's so many people on Twitter that need to be corrected because they're wrong. Trevor, this is a this is a this is a uh, Adriel, you're reading long it then. battle <laughs> because it, it's about last week's show, and you and Trevor were on last week's show. Well, Hello, you should read it. Uh, this is from Phil. Hello, I'm an avid listener to the broadcast and enjoy every episode. While listening to episode 324, the guys were talking as if the liberals had already won the election. The voting hasn't even started. I've been shooting for over 50 years, and like hell, I'm going down without a fight. This is absolutely crazy to give in like Trudeau's has won the election and we will have to give up our firearms. Our firearms are private property and it sure as hell should be respected as like it is. Their so-called buybacks are pure bull. That's why we're voting <laughs> these cards out. I've been a law-abiding citizen all my life and spent years in law enforcement. I won't be treated like a criminal for love of my hobby. May I suggest you keep fighting to get rid of the tyranny called Trudeau? And this fall down government. Why give in now and give up on the passion of your sport? Trudeau, Trudeau must go. Thanks, Phil. I mean, I'm going to be voting this year and getting all my friends and family to vote. But I'm pretty sure Alberta is uh, uh, not going to be where this thing is lost. Yeah, and I just don't know. You got to convince a bunch of your neighbors, Trevor. Man, I, your area. I, I was looking on the 338 maps there. Yeah, your it's gross. Going red right now. It's gross, and it does all the time, man. And I, I don't get it. It's well. I think one of the things that this area is guilty of is voting for the man, not the party. And I don't mean the leader. It's not like they're voting liberal because they want Justin, and it's not like they're voting uh, liberal because they even know what the platform says. In this area, typically, the only candidate who is not retarded is is a liberal and so they they often vote for a liberal because they know him and i got crap for saying this on facebook four years ago but it's a french thing the liberal candidate is french and the he gets elected by the francophones in this region of which there are more than anglophones Mm -hmm. and so the francophones in this region support the liberal party they support their guy they're voting Mm -hmm. for the for the guy because they know him um and then um, I think the average in political intelligence in this area is below average. Now, that was a clunky way of saying people around here don't follow politics and don't actually know what the hell is going on. So, yeah. a lot of hunters, a lot of shooters in New Brunswick, though. Yeah, they don't, but you know what, Kelly? They're not involved. They're not involved. And they, and they think that it's not going to affect them and they don't get politically involved whatsoever. They have no idea and they don't care. Well, if all they and, did, even if they watched Trudeau's uh, uh, news uh, broadcast there, he would have said, we're getting rid of assault weapons like AR-15s. But what he didn't say that would affect them is that includes your Brown and BAR, too. Yeah. yeah detachable yeah. mag, semi-auto, that thing's gone. So Yeah. No, um, never say that. No. No. But that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks, Phil, for sending in the email. We will try and continue to fight the tyranny that you're talking about by having these podcasts if you'd like to send an email to the show send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com uh podcast reviews we don't have any if you'd like to send us a review that'd be fantastic we'll read it here as well shout outs trevor you got some yeah um again to the losers club and justin um justin uh, this was his first time as match director uh his first solo course in um Black Bad's instruction, and he did a fantastic job. But man, I, I when I I got to tell you, the match was so well run. The stages were pure Ipsic freestyle. Um, again, we got out of there at two o'clock, which is a testament to Ooh, nice. knowing your Efficiency, range. Yeah, yeah, knowing your range, knowing what it can handle, not ha- not taking on more people than you can handle, not taking on more stages than you can handle. Nine stages done by two o'clock man like i put a match on there once and uh, it wasn't this good i didn't have the help he had but this even besides that his stages were well thought out and um a lot of fun so great job congratulations again um knocked it out of the park 
and hopefully I will see him and uh, the other the other losers. The other uh, losers. Aww. Yeah. On the weekend, so I don't think Marcel is going to be around though. He's got a. He's actually coming up here to visit family while I'm going down there. So, okay. yeah. But uh, hopefully, I'll see the rest of the crew. And I'm bringing Gallon. I'll be picking Gallon up on the way down. So, excellent. Okay. Yep. Adriel. Uh, yeah. One to to Rick. He's gonna drive across the country <laughs> again. Yeah. Again and he's uh, driving across the country again. Again, yeah, and. Uh, like go see a bunch of us maple cedars and help us put on some events and some do some training and that kind of thing. So that's, hey. uh, I couldn't, I couldn't do any of this. I couldn't do like a quarter of what you guys do. And uh, yeah, to be making this, uh, the trip again. <laughs> Amazing. He's, and he's also going to be going out, out East in November as well. So don't know how he does. Yeah. It. The, yeah. There's yeah. more uh, CRPS stuff going on. Yep. Yep. It's going to be going out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's crazy. Okay, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Greg Reese for my new Colt hat. Just to let you know, I had one last year for about two seconds uh, when uh, talk TACCOM was happening in Ajax. Uh, Colt was right across the hall or aisle from us. Uh, at the, uh, us being the CCFR, I went over and gave them a, a Gunny Girl calendar, so they gave me a hat. But I it quickly got given to somebody else because he whined. And <laughs> and I said, well, you know what? They're coming back tomorrow. They said, and they're bringing more hats. They didn't come back tomorrow. So when Greg Weiss is at TACCOM this time, he got me a cold hat. So I wanted to say thank you for that. And also to Random Dave. In case you guys didn't know, today is Random Dave's birthday. I, I wanted did, to see, I Yeah. Is that, I wanted is that to his see. excuse for not being on right now? I think so. Mm. But I just wanted to say happy birthday, Dave. He could have had mm. lots of people say happy birthday to him silently yeah. across the yeah. internet yeah. if he had just been on the show. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, just give him a little bit Instead of a shout he had out. To meet thing. people IRL. I know. I and have like cake. Uh, IRL. Stuff. <laughs> oh, Adriel. <laughs> uh, love it. You guys, let's finish up, shall we? <laughs> Patreon, we don't That's have any new... He said. <laughs> new Patreonies this week but if you'd like to support the show you can and get ma- you know patches and other stuff in the mail Adriel has recently sent out some of that by the way uh, you can go on to patreon.com and go and search for Slam Fire Radio it, what it does is helps us out we get to put out content and yeah we get to you know keep the stuff. lights on yeah basically and yeah uh, why don't we sign off? So you, why don't you go and support uh, one of our national firearms associations like the CCFR? You know, they're doing some great things right now. And check us out on Gunners of Canada. Like, Give us like on Facebook. Right now we're 2,204. So where are we against that orphanage? Not even close. Oh, okay. So share it with your friends. Tell everybody to like us because we do really want to, you know, beat some kids. And that's about it. Homeless kids, Kelly. Homeless kids. We can't even. We can't even keep up with homeless kids. All right, everybody, say good night now. Good night now. Good night, Kelly. So, if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail dot com. Now, go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.